Hey, good morning, my fellow crypto trading partners. Today is Friday morning, June 10th. We're about an hour and 45 minutes out from market open here in the U.S. And I have been awake since 3 a.m. this morning. I've rolled out of bed at about 4 because I just couldn't go back to sleep. I put in a couple trades actually this morning. Longer term trades. And uh, looks like we got BTC crossing 30,000 again. Got an alert up here on the screen. Um, so this morning I want to do some kind of two things in one video. And I'm doing something different with uh, trading view peeps. Uh, with you guys, I've found that if I stream the video... Uh, I can go longer than 20 minutes. Sometimes I don't get in quite everything that I want to say, miss some important um, and even critical details at the end because I'm in a hurry to finish it before 20 minutes. Now, I do like to keep my videos shorter. Uh, I tend to be long-winded, so the time limit did help with that. Um, but I also want to take my time and make sure I give you guys all the details and what I'm looking at in the charts. All right, so trading view people, uh, I'm going to turn this stream. I'm just testing it right now. It's private. I'm going to turn it public, hopefully at the end here. And uh, it will appear as it usually does in your view. There goes Bitcoin again, crossing that 30,000 mark. Okay, so uh, a couple other things in terms of housekeeping. Um, most of you guys have given me some good feedback on what uh, my public-facing uh, transparent portfolio should be that I trade with. Uh, so I've asked the question, should I put uh, $10,000 in there first or one Bitcoin? Which would you prefer? So far, most of you have... Uh, Give me the feedback that you'd rather see 10k in that portfolio just because it's a more manageable amount. Uh, a lot of you said that's something that you all can trade with and it's easily divisible. And I personally would like to see what we can do with 10,000 in five years. I'd like to see us add uh, a few zeros behind that, at least two. And turn it into a hundred thousand, but I do know it's possible that it could, um, you know, it, it, if we get a massive bull market, we should do very well. Um, it it would uh, it would really thrill me to get that ten thousand to one million in five years. Yeah, I'm skeptical a little bit, but I also know what's possible being that uh, I did 16x in two years. Uh, so 10,000 to 100,000 is 10x, and that's in five years. So I do believe that we could do that. Um, anyways, if you want to leave any more feedback regarding um, you know, what I should do with my public facing and transparent portfolio then please do, do so in the comments also i'm looking to branch out a little bit in terms of my video production and make some different videos uh here's a hint at what one might be can you all tell me what this is it's got something in it all right that's going to be a video in the future that i do provided i have time I'm doing a lot of different things here guys and i work a full-time job so I'm trying to squeeze these videos in and trading and everything else along with, you know, family life and uh, it gets pretty busy. Anyways, that is uh, what I've got for you today. Let's jump into the charts and we'll do some quick uh, analysis on our uh, markets and also crypto space. And then what I want to do today is primarily focus on what the predominant pattern or indicator is that I am looking at in the altcoin space. Uh, there is a pattern that I look for, and um, you know, so like for instance, a couple days ago, GTC pumped uh, 25%. It was one of the only coins that pumped that much in the day. 
it was one of the only coins I held in my trading portfolio. How did I catch that? How did I know of all the coins GTC might be one that pumps? Well, I didn't know, uh, but there is a pattern I think will help many of you uh, catch some of these trades at this point in time. This is the predominant pattern. All right. And another week, it might be another pattern or it might be another indicator or it might be another level support zone, et cetera, et cetera. But at this point in time, I'm seeing a pattern. I'm going to point that out to you. All right, let's get started. I'm going to jump into the charts here. We will start with the dollar. Uh, before I do that, actually, let me give a quick shout out to my friend Sean at Grandview Farms. Uh, there is his number. Um, guys, he's selling grass-fed grade a heritage angus beef need to get all the keywords in here uh from northeast iowa to anywhere in the continental u.s for about four dollars a pound i mean premium cuts everything you can barely buy hamburger for that all right enough said on that give him a call guys it is very satisfying to know that I have meat in the freezer should the supply chain fail. And it's looking very likely that that could happen, unfortunately. It's weird that I even have to say that, but this is the reality we live in. Okay, so DX. Why the dollar is coming up again, and I've mentioned this before, guys, that this appears to be a bear flag. All right, we're coming back into that 103 resistance, and if that resistance overhead continues to hold, you should see further decline of the dollar. Now, that all makes sense. CPI is being released today, CPI data, and I'm betting. If I were a betting man, I would say that inflation is still fairly high, which means that is a weakened dollar. If CPI is high, the dollar will hit that resistance and dive. All right. Now, if the dollar hits that resistance and drops, that you know, weakening of the dollar is uh, indicating how much inflation there is, which still has to be priced into the market, possibly based upon these uh, numbers that we get and this data. And look at this. The VIX is actually doing pretty. Uh, oh, it is spiking. OK, I missed that. I didn't. Uh, I haven't looked at this chart. OK, so I said this is a bull flag and I said we could see a spike here out of this bull flag wedge we're running into some resistance let me zoom in here right now the 100 day and the 50 day moving average right here but this is a big bull flag guys so look for this vix uh this fear indicator could mess with things as well um if the dollar weakens and the vix goes up our vix tends to be the predominant indicator so you're going to pay more attention to the VIX than you would the dollar in this case, especially if this thing spikes like I think it might do. We've got lots of room for multimedia or for the media. Let me just say the media. It's like its own entity uh, to continue to drum up fear campaigns, whether that be monkeypox whether that be uh, more shootings, uh, Russia-Ukraine war, uh, you know, China invading Taiwan. There's plenty of narrative that the media can grab onto, gravitate towards, and drum up these fear campaigns, all right? And that can, sp will spill over into the market. It will. I mean, it's not can. It's a matter of control. The media is the current... Uh, predominant uh dictator of the globe right now all right so whatever story they tell the the people that the people want to consume and want to accept and if the you know it's not about whether you or i accept that it's about whether most of people accept that the collective if the collective accepts that 
then that is the driving force of our market, of our economy, of our political movements, etc., etc. That's just the way it is. We live in a society filled with people. So whatever the masses do, that is the well, uh, move and sway of society as well. And that spills uh, all spills over into our markets here in terms of prices. So we have to be aware of this fear index. Okay, so, um, you know, market is still an hour and a half from opening. I can skip over all those. Uh, let's see, how far are we? I got to take off this alert here. This is driving me crazy. Hang on a second. Bitcoin is just continuing to cross over that. I'm going to get rid of this alert. Uh, actually, I'm just going to stop it there. And it's still there. And I th think maybe I can unpause it later on. I don't know. Not worried about it right now. Okay, so I'm skipping over our indexes. Let's just go in order here. Total, again, nothing has changed there. We have met our target down from the smaller head and shoulders, which you can see embedded into the head of this larger, more ominous head and shoulders. I hope, guys, that doesn't play out. But on a longer time frame, it may. And this very well could just be a bear flag. All right, we are in bear territory. We can't rule out the possibility of anything. If this larger head and shoulders pattern plays out here, guys, all right, this is the larger one. All right, then we go, the market goes all the way down to around 400 billion, just under 400 billion. That's crazy to think about, but not without possibility. All right. So we have to be aware of that. Um, Ethereum right now. All right. Looking like it's reached a major level of support here. This purple uh, descending trend line. And as well, you can see the VPVR. Uh, most of the volume is right there at that zoom level. Right, right where we are. Just above us, actually. All right. So here's a Bitcoin, and I don't know if in the last video, let me hide VPVR right now. It's not important. If I showed you this uh, second triangle. Now, there's many different patterns down here, guys. You could also see an M here, larger M right here. All right. You could also see a smaller M with inside of the black triangle. All right in which case we're down to support some people have drawn sort of a, a diamond pattern here which is see that that is also an indicator of a reverse all right reversal pattern all right and my current bias actually remains that we will see some upside before we see downside so I'm saying in the short term, like within the next week or two, we bounce from this 30,000 level. We're range bound right now, right? We've been between, you know, 29, 30, 31,000, but we're slowly ascending overall. Uh, and I think it's possible that we go fill this CME futures gap at 36,000. See where I'm talking about? All right. So usually those gaps are filled sooner rather than later. Uh, so we have to watch that. Speaking of sooner rather than later, let's zoom into the two hour. I want to show you another gap that we may fill before we go to 36,000. And that is right down here at 28,850-ish. Do you guys see where I'm talking about? This is the two hour chart. All right, so it's possible that we have one quick shakeout before we head up to that 36,000 level. Uh, and so this might come before that, all right? 28,000 might come before 36,000. It's just something we have to keep our eyes on and be aware of. Uh, it's always good to have as much data and information as possible regarding future movement. 
Okay, Bitcoin dominance is another thing we're looking at here. And guys, I know people say this uh, this level right here that we came up into is resistance, but look at our target up, all right? This is a cup and handle pattern I drew on the Bitcoin dominance chart, all right? It indicates a target of 48%, and that aligns with what I'm seeing here, which is another bull flag. This is a bull flag. Moved up, bull flag, moved up. I expect us to move up again, possibly hitting our heads on that 48% resistance. All right, so bear that in mind as well. Uh, U.S. Tether dominance is falling. This was a bull flag. It appears we're going to fall to the downside of that. And the latest data that I remember reading is over $1 billion have moved from Tether to USDC. All right, USDC is or has been audited tether has not and refuses to be that's a little bit shady so people with the recent fiasco uh, and depegging of ust um, are are not trusting stable coins as much understandably so and a lot of people have moved to bitcoin as well as a, a trading pair and a safe haven that's a good thing. That's a good thing for both Bitcoin and all of crypto. Okay, now I want to show you uh, enough said about Bitcoin and what uh, future potentiality might be. Let's jump to some trades that I'm interested in for my next trade here. So I've had next trade list and I've got a lot of coins in here. Some of these have the patterns represented that I wanted to show you. And some of them are, I'm just curious what's going to happen with them. All right, so I can make this list shareable and I will do so. I'll put that in the description below uh, wherever I can do so. I think I can, I can do that here on TradingView. There's a lot of things I can't post here on TradingView. Uh, so for, for, the, for all the rest of the stuff, you guys know where to go. Um, so, guys, let's let's first start with let, well, let's start with God's token because here's an example of what I did and made a mistake on. All right, so zooming out here on this chart, and I want to bring this up a little bit into our view better. Uh, let me move it out auto. All right, and then so so you see this descending wedge. That's really what I'm drawing on, and that's what I'm looking at on a lot of the altcoin charts. How many minutes are we into this video here? 18? Okay, well, I can take my time now because I have no 20-minute cap. And I'll just spend a few minutes here. I don't want to get too long-winded. Um, but this descending wedge made me privy to the fact that the God's token was going to pop soon. All right, zooming back in, I want to show you where I bought in and what happened here on this one. So right here in the middle of this red candle, I saw that we were going to go down and I thought we would either bounce on the bottom of this uh, wedge or this level of support I have drawn here at 32.77 cents. All right, what happened is we went down even further, and because I am practicing good trading strategy here for my public facing portfolio, in other words, I'm putting in my stops. This enables me to save you all from following me down the dark abyss that Luna and UST was into nothingness. Um, and it allows me to put out more frequent trades because when I get stopped out, obviously, immediately, I will look for a new trade. All right, so I put in my stop level. Really, I put it way down here. But take a look at this wick, guys. See this wick down here on this red candle? It came down just enough to stop me out. And that is my worry with stops. That's why I don't like them. Let me close this door a little bit. Excuse me one second. All right, and the risk here with putting in stops is that you will miss out on big moves up. I've said before that 
had I put in stops with many of my previous trades, I would have missed out on all the money that I invested in Luna. That part is true. I tend to become a hodler in a bear market. That's not good when people are waiting on me to put out trade signals. They want to see what I'm trading. And that's why I'm doing all this, guys. That's why I am putting in my stops. And I'm just taking my time here so I can get the hang of this so I don't have these stopouts. So what happened is I got stopped out of the God's token here, and I never really re-entered. I knew we were going across, but uh, at that point, I would just had looked had looked for another trade and invested into another trade and didn't have that money available any longer but look at what gods did it took off from the level i bought it to the level i would have sold i'm going to measure up to this next level up here at a dollar and one cents the level i would have sold i wouldn't have sold at this wick up guys i'm not i'm just being honest i wouldn't have held it way up here all right some of you might have done so some of you might have sold up there but that's more a lucky move because there's not really anything there that would indicate well there is a level i guess okay excuse me all right but i if i'm being honest i would have sold right here at this first level i i would and i but that's a 150 percent uh gain portfolio gain that i missed out on because i got stopped out and i didn't re-enter all right but this descending wedge the point of all this is this descending wedge is what i'm looking for so in my next trade, which I still am 50% in, by the way, and you guys, I've I put out these trade alerts on my site, uh, and you know this. You know that I went into uh, GTC around, what was it, around $3? Um, yeah, right here. I think on this red can candle, middle of the red candle is where I went in. And... I was able to capitalize about 20%. I knew once we hit this 50-day uh, moving average here, that was probably going to act as resistance. And that is exactly where I sold 50% of my position in this trade. Now, what am I waiting for with GTC? I'm waiting for it to come right back down, really, and touch or test the top of this previous resistance uh, before it takes off even further. All right, and at that point, I may re-enter the other 50% of my trade in, and, uh, and leverage that, all right? Leverage the knowledge that I know uh, typically doesn't always have to happen, guys. Doesn't always have to happen, but uh, typically we do like to come back down, kiss mama goodbye. Uh, any previous respected level of resistance or re support the mar market likes to revisit one last time just to see if that was true and uh, it will test it and bounce off of it that's kind of what i'm expecting and if that happens i would re-enter if it doesn't happen that's fine i've got 50 percent of my money still in this trade all right but here again is your descending wedge again guys this is the predominant pattern currently at this time that i am looking at and this is a very long trending very long trending all right this comes all the way back from november when the market started to fall all right so that is what you're actually looking for on these and these okay not only are you going to get a short-term pump uh a lot of times, let's take a look at uh, uh, more aggressive traders once you spot these uh, descending wedges, what you might do, all right? So here's EOS, and you can see I've got, again, a long trending descending wedge, all right? We've got some bullish divergence down here on the RSI, big time bullish divergence. This all indicates to me, guys, that the altcoins uh, market are still is still going to pop. It's still due for a pop. All right, and that might coincide with what I said about Bitcoin uh, going up to that thirty-six thousand dollar level before it proceeds to go down. All right, we are in bear territory on Bitcoin. I don't need to say much more about that. I've repeated that many times on my last videos. But coming into this trade, so you can see some of our coins are at the top of these descending wedges. In this case, EOS is at the bottom. That indicates to me that there's three good trades short term. 
if you're more aggressive. Let me uh, preface that, all right? So if you're more aggressive, you could enter right where we are or down here anywhere, DCA, dollar cost average in, and you wait for our move up, all right? At which point, once we get to the top of this wedge, you would sell. Why would you sell? Because we don't know for sure that we're going to break out of that wedge just yet, do we? All right. So capitalize on that that movement. All right. That gives you about 50 percent, 50 percent up to the top of that wedge if you're more aggressive. All right. That's trade number one. Now, let's just say I'm going to get rid of uh, this red here. Now I'm gonna yeah, I'm gonna leave that. All right. Now let's just say we do move around the top of that. Then all of a sudden we break out. All right. Trade number two would be right here. All right. And you would re-enter at that point because you have confirmation. You're waiting for confirmation on the daily, or if you're more aggressive, the four-hour chart. Confirmation is a candle close above that trend line. And another one, opening and closing. That confirms your move above the trend line, right? Or the descending wedge in this case. You enter there, and your second trade would take you up to another level of resistance. I would say the 200-day moving average would be a good level of resistance. All right, so now you can get yourself another 40% around 40% on that particular move. All right, now what happens is what typically happens. We come back down and we test the top level, which was previous resistance for so long here, guys, all the way from November. So the market is gonna wanna come back and say goodbye to this resistance that it has respected for so long. And you wait for your trade entry, all right? and you take another entry right here, at which point we take off, all right? And now you can just take profits along the way, take profits along the way, take profits along the way, take profits to whatever your final target happens to be on this case. I mean, we could measure this out and we could see what it would be, all right? So a breakout of this particular trend line, let me just move this back here, all right? That is our measurement. I'm going to drag that down here and we'll approximate where we might break out. All right. That takes us really, it does take us almost all the way up to that $5.46 level that I have drawn there. But I've got two trend lines here. So if we break out sooner, it might be a little bit lower than that. Anywhere up here, guys, would be your final target. And that's uh, some crazy profits there. But that's what I am seeing on the chart. I've learned not to doubt what I am seeing. Remember this, guys. Remember this. <laughs> I taught myself and I taught us all who were watching. I doubted this head and shoulders pattern. Look at where it took us precisely. This ascending maroon trend line. We hit that exactly just a few weeks ago. A couple weeks ago, right? So it took us right to our target. I doubted that the whole time. In fact, I made a public statement that I was going against it for the first time. That's what happens when you doubt technical analysis, guys. So again, with EOS, that's what I'm seeing on the chart. It's just what I'm seeing, guys. And so you have to tr you, you know, kind of trust what you see. And you could, you could buy and hold to that level, but I prefer trading only because you can take these profits, guys, and you can leverage these moves. When you know where your levels of resistance slash support are, then you trade out and you can be a lot safer trader while really maximizing your profits. Instead of just holding from here to here, you leverage that and you uh, compound those profits. All right. Does that all make sense, guys? So this is what you're looking for on all of these altcoins. The best ones that I see, the ones that I know are going to pump, have these descending wedges. Try to draw them out on your charts. Let's do one live here real quick before I end this video, just because I like these videos to contain content that can teach. So Solano, we have Solano here. All right. Now here I drew a descending wedge and it did break out and up. True to technical uh, uh, technical consistency. 
Now, I'm seeing right away, I'm seeing a descending wedge. I don't even have to draw it, but I will. I want to show you guys how to draw these uh, trend lines. So I'm going to start right here, and I'm going to move up. I'm going to try to get as much touch points as possible. I like body touch points. They're more powerful, and they're more, much more of a strength indicator than the wick ups. However, if you can't get the body, then I'm satisfied with a wick uh, touch as well. It just help, helps to confirm that. So we have one trend line right here. I'll thicken that up. All right, and we can draw another one on the bottom side. I like to start in the middle just to see where this thing goes. All right, and you can see we got another touch right here. And you can see that is perfect because actually look at this big move up. Solana touched the bottom of this trend line, couldn't break above it, took about a week to break above it. When it did, it moved up rapidly, signifying how strong this trend line was. All right. And uh, so we have a bunch of touch points up here, one right here, a wick down right here, guys. I don't know if you can see that. Uh, zooming in so we have a wick down another touch there and of course we're riding along the bottom side of that right now and if i zoom out solana is on very strong support here at around 30 uh, 36 dollars is its, its bottom support and it's right now the price is 39 dollars and 39 cents so once again we're at the bottom of this descending wedge and on very solid support if it's me, I'm not going to short Solana. I know they've had a lot of pro problems lately, and um, you know it, it, people are kind of uh, using that news as a uh, catalyst to short. I'm not going to short Solana here. If it's me, I'm expecting, okay, so we could come down and touch the bottom of this descending wedge one more time but that would be a quick move because that would break major support and the market doesn't like to just do that in one fell swoop it would come back up quickly and i would expect that at some point in the near future we're going to touch the top of that trend line once again just like eos that's where you would exit first time wait for confirmation a break above this uh, descending trend line you would re-enter and ride that out to resistance. I'm thinking the 200-day moving average, which is coming down on all of these charts, is good resistance. You would exit there. Wait for the market to turn back around. Kiss mama goodbye. So we're going to test that previous resistance as support. And you would re-enter here. And then it's goodbye to the moon. All right. That's the way I do these trades, guys. All right, so a little bit longer video, but I'm taking the opportunity to teach a little bit during these videos, and I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, let's do our outro here. All right, so Bitcoin does remain range bound, though a move up at this point seems more likely than a fall down short term, and I'm talking within the next week or two. Mid to long term, we are in bearish ter territory, so the trend remains downward, right? Um, pull a Bitcoin chart here. Everything under this black ascending line is bear territory. All right. All under here. This black ascending line is bear territory. Uh, we remain in bearish territory. So the trend remains downwards unless the market signals otherwise. Signals are reverse. All right. I bet you that this move up that I'm expecting might fake a lot of people out and they may see it as a reversal sign. Maybe it is a reversal sign. We don't know yet. Once we hit that 36,000 mark, that's where the true test is going to be for the bulls. All right. Can they take us back above that? And then we have further up this ascending black line. Until we get back above that, I am not a bull. I am a bear in this territory. I have to be. So, but on the altcoin charts, because we're speaking more short term here within a week or two. Uh, continue to look for those descending wedges. They seem to be the lead indicators, uh, you know, for nice pumps on these altcoins. Conservatively, you would wait for a break above those wedges. If you want to play it more conservative, which is understandable in this bear market, it's a bear market. You're going long in a bear market on altcoins, the most risky investment in the crypto space. 
So if you want to play that type of a move more conservatively, then wait for those breakouts above the descending wedges instead of buying like I showed you on EOS or Solana at the bottom of the wedge. You can do that, but that's a more aggressive move and you just have to be tolerant of those risks and ready to lose, all right? Because it might not happen. Uh, <clears throat> then you wait for your confirmation and be patient. Uh, all right. Let me show you one real quick before I close out that I've been patient on. I'm holding this in my personal portfolio. This is Suku. Again, descending wedge. We broke out. Now, yesterday and today, it's been up, uh, you know, close to 15%. Running into resistance here at this 50-day moving average. And I'm still holding this one. I don't have stops on this because this is my personal holding. I don't care about stops on my personal holdings because I don't want to miss those big moves. But on the public facing, I am going to have stop outs. This is not in my public facing portfolio. Uh, so put in those stops fairly tight if you don't want to lose everything, if you're not willing to lose everything, if you're not that risk tolerant like I did with Luna. Put in those stops. And even if one of your position kicks up, like let's say you have a big spike like we did with GTC and you get 25% in one day. Even if one of those, if your stops are set, you know, three, four percent below and you have four or five other positions, you still do just as well. You at least break even, if not better, by having one of those uh, altcoins pop. All right. And that is it for today, guys. Uh, I will see you in the next video, which comes out on Monday. I hope you enjoyed today. I know it's been a little bit longer, but I appreciate you sticking with me. Peace, y'all.